homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, it's time for us to prepare for the ultimate SHTF. Or in other words, the inevitable SHTF. The one that's going to come to us all, old age. Crystal and I are not getting any younger. I'll be 60 my birthday. And I would like to continue this lifestyle on into my 70s. To do that, I'm going to have to modify some things. I know that bending over for me is a hard deal. So I need to do something to uh, compensate for that. Well, I do all kinds of things on the channel that allows us to uh, compensate for bending over and harvesting or bending over and uh, hoeing or bending over and planting. I do all kinds of things to compensate for that. <coughs> but my number one hard thing to do is hand weeding. Now, I have to get down on all fours in order to hand weed. Uh, I hand weed things like basil. Uh, I've been hand weeding things like uh, cucumbers and, uh, and uh, watermelons and cantaloupes and all the vining plants. I've pretty much been hand weeding those because they just don't lend themselves well to using a hoe. Well, I watch a, a little channel regular called uh, Living Traditions Homestead. Now, to me, they're young folks, but they're, they're I don't know how old they are. I won't say how old I think they are. Uh, go away, wasp. One nailed the far out of me the other day. Well, I'm going to have to stop this and get rid of him. I love waspers, but everyone I see is carrying about it, is carrying a caterpillar of some kind. So, they're in my garden all the time catching corn worms and different stuff. So, I, I try and leave them be until they don't leave me be. I got nailed twice the other day. So, uh, that wasper's nest has to go. Anyway, what I was saying, we were at, I was watching Living Traditions Homestead. And they use a ground cloth. Uh, uh, agricultural cloth. They say it lasts for years. I don't know. Uh, I have put down, I have used three mil and uh, six mil black plastic uh, to garden in before, but only tomatoes and things like that. And uh, to be honest, I have to take it up every year because it's just not uh, not viable for a second year. And generally, by the time you take it up, your plants are done, and the plastic's done too, and it comes up in pieces. And it is one big nasty mess to fool with. Well, I don't want to do that again. Uh, that's something that would be even tougher on an old man. So, what I did was, I bought this agricultural cloth. Let me show you what it looks like. Here it is. I bought, uh, when I bought, well, I'm going to have to cut it loose. When I bought this, I bought 300 feet of it. Now, I don't have 300 feet worth of, uh, worth of vine and stuff. But, I bought 300 feet, so if I liked it, I could use it from year to year. So, this is what it looks like. It's kind of like a tarpaulin. Let me put you over here where you can see a little better. It's kind of like tarpaulin, but supposedly it's UV stabilized, and it won't uh, 
it won't uh, rot up from the sun. So, and it allows water to pass through, but it doesn't allow plants to grow through. So what I've done is I've plowed up a 50 foot spot in my kitchen garden. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down three rows of this side by side so that I have 18 by 50 of places to plant uh, cucumbers, watermelons, cantaloupe, and squash. So that's what I'm going to plant in it. Those are the big ones that give me a hard time and make me have to get down on the ground to weed them. So if this works out good, then I won't have to be on the ground weeding those. And it's going to save me a whole lot of time and a whole lot of back pain. So I need to roll out uh, 21 paces. I didn't measure it with a tape measure because it's your garden. It don't matter. So I'm going to roll 21 paces of this out and cut it off. Okay, so you can uh, see, okay, this is a, I bought a six by 300 foot ground cover, three ounce per square yard with stripes 12 inches on center. Uh, the price, shipping and all, came up to, wait a minute. Sent it by ground FedEx. It was $128 total shipping off. $30 shipping. So, whew. But if this lasts me for like six years at a time, then I'm not going to complain too bad. Now, I think I've got this around backwards, so I need to turn it around so that uh, it'll unroll. Now what I've, all I've done is I've set my bucket forks at an angle so it would set down here and then as it unrolled it would just roll back into the bucket. So let me uh, see if I can get this going. Oh yeah, that's going to work just fine. Okay, that was 21 paces. So now I'm just going to cut it off. Don't cut too easy. stuff. Okay, there's the first 50 foot. Now, I'll go ahead and get, uh, I need three of them. I'll be 150 foot. That'll leave me 150 foot still on the roll, and I'll put it up in the building uh, so that nothing happens to it. And uh, I'll show you the next step. Okay, I've got three Three pieces cut. By the way, kitchen shears cut it real good. So those scissors were just too small. They were for cutting paper. They were not for cutting heavy duty stuff. So, But kitchen shears cut the far out of it. Now it's time to get it ready to, uh, to plant in. Now, 
it's starting to get hot out here already so today I won't be able to get them into the garden but I'll get them into the garden tomorrow uh, so let's go ahead and get our holes cut so that we can uh, and I'm not gonna cut holes with this I'm gonna from what I understand this will fray if you cut holes with this and I wasn't worried about the ends because I can double the ends over and and pin them down uh, but you can go back and see our pinner. We built, uh, we did a homemade pinner that, uh, so I don't have to bend over to pin these in. But I need to cut holes in them, so I'll show you what I'm going to do about that. All right, I've got my tractor back out of the way, and I've set up my two saw horses here with a couple of uh, 12, 14 inch, 14 foot long boards on them. And I'm going to use a torch to cut the holes in this plastic, in this uh, this ground cover. So let me uh, pull a piece up here and let's see how we can do. I'm just making this all up as I go, okay? I don't know how to do this. I've never done it before. And if the wind starts blowing, I'm going to be burnt. Come out of there. Okay. Now, the way I've got it is... It looks like that this line, you can't see, it looks like that this is the center line. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down through here, and here close to the end, I'm going to cut two holes in it. One on either side of the center line. So I'm going to cut a hole right here, and let's see how it does. torch is on. Let's see if I can cut a hole. Let's see, go about two feet from the end. Wow, that cut a good hole. That cut real good. Let's put one here. Pick it up. And now those are all, it's like they've welded together. So I'm going to go down through here. I'm going to put two holes at close to the ends. And in the middle, I'm going to do about every four feet. But I'm going to do them just in the middle because that's where the, that's where I'll put the big vining crops. This works out really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and get them all cut and then we'll come back to you. Okay, got about 150 feet of it done, ready to go in the garden. Got 150 feet left here on the roll. I'm going to find a place for this in the barn. Uh, try and put it where the rats won't bother it. 
that's hard to do. So tomorrow, when everything cools down a little, it's starting to get in the heat of the day here, so it's time for an old man to hunt the cool. Uh, tomorrow, when everything starts to cool down some, we'll go ahead and uh, put this in the garden about daylight. So, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, it's the next morning. Uh, the sun's just starting to come up over the horizon. Uh, thank goodness, it's probably 48 degrees out here this morning. Uh, it's uh, decided to remind me that it's still spring. Today's June the 4th, and I'm going to get this on, and I'd like to get uh, some stuff planted. I don't know if I'll get them planted this morning or if I'll, I've got some other stuff to do. Uh, so I don't know if I get them planted or not, but I want to get this in the ground. Let me show you where I'm going to put it. Now, right here is our kitchen garden. Uh, right here, right there, is our asparagus bed. Uh, the ferns are just uh, full in there. But I've got a problem, and uh, I don't know if you can see how well you can see it. It's right here, and all through the bed, I've got stupid Johnson grass. And it don't matter how much you pull or how much mulch you put down. or That stuff just... It's, it's the bane of my existence. So, I've got to get it cleared off. I've also got a mow. Of course, I haven't done my mowing yet this week. So, there's that. I've always got a mow. So, we're going to get this stuff put down. Uh, I've got it here in the tractor. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get at it. Okay, I've got the, my pins, the pins that I need, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bunch of these in my pocket. I don't want to carry this can around, it's just going to be something in my hands. Uh, I hope I have enough pins to do what needs to be done. If I don't, I'll use dirt. I've got plenty of that. So, I'm going to use this uh, pin setter. I'm going to use this homemade pin setter. Uh, you can go back. We did a video on it. And it just, uh, the pins go in here like that. And it holds them. And then when you're, after you've pushed it, you just pull it to the side and then turn it over and mash the pin all the way back in. So it's a no bend method of installing this landscape fabric. Now, at the same time, I'm going to need my grabber so I don't have to bend over to help straighten this out. So it's just going to sit right there in my bib overall pocket. Doesn't reach the ground, so it's going to work out good. So, let's get over here and put pins in. Now, I'll only put pins down one side because the other side is going to go on. Uh, I'll have to pin through the other fabric that laps over. So, let's get at it.
Okay, I'd like to show you how the landscape fabric pinner works. Uh, of course, you can go back and look at the build, but I'll show you how to make one. But I wanted to be able to not have to bend over to pin this fabric. Everything I watched on YouTube, these guys were down on the ground with a hammer nailing these in. And uh, I can't do that. It just hurts too bad. So I made this so that this will sit in here. Now there's a magnet here at the back that holds the pin in place so that it doesn't fall over or out. When you turn it upside down, it doesn't fall out. Now, once I've got it a pin in it, then what I've discovered now that I've installed some landscape fabric, what I've discovered is you need to firm the soil down before you pin down. So let's show you how these how it puts it in the ground. I want to put a pin right here. So what I want to do first is I want to step on the ground and firm it in because that's where I plowed. Then you take this, you don't let it touch the ground, and then you just ram it hard, straight down. And that puts the pin in, so when you lift up, the pin's partially inserted. You just turn it sideways and push it all the way down. No bending over to put these pins in. And I'm going to put in the last few. I hope I've put them close enough together. Okay, I've got them all in. Uh, I could only put down, apparently I didn't plow enough. Plus, I decided to scoot over to leave me room to mow on the right there by the asparagus bed uh, as an impromptu thing. Just as good that I did, I'm out of pins. So I wouldn't have had enough pins to have pinned down another sheet. So if that gives me 28 holes for an experiment this year, to see how it is. What am I going to do with that other piece? I'll just put it up. Uh, there's uh, there's plenty I could do with it this year. And if I decide in the fall that I want to do something with it, that's what I'll do. Uh, right now, I think uh, 28 holes is enough. Uh, tomorrow, I might come out and plant some cucumbers and squash and, and stuff like that and get it started. Now, I don't know how this is going to work out for us. Uh, I really want it to work out well. Uh, the, this worked out really well. Uh, there's only one modification I would make to it. My old fumble fingers, I drop those pins sometimes. And uh, the magnet down here is not strong enough to pick them up without touching it. So I think I'm going to put a magnet right here on the end or maybe right here on the side. Glue it on. So I can reach down and pick up a pin if I drop it. So that might be a thing that uh, gets done to this. I'll just make one. I've got some magnets with a hole in them that I could just put a screw and screw it to it. So I'm hoping it'll work out good. Now if, uh, if this holds up for six years, I've got enough for 12 years. Well in 12 years I'll be 72. So you know, I thought it might last me the rest of my life. My grandmother used to have a saying 
that if I die when I ought to, that'll last me the rest of my life. She used to say it all the time. Uh, mom's mom, granny. So, now if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this stuff all the time. We upload on Sundays. Now, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.